I wanted to tell you guys a story today about a great dear friend of mine, the Apple 27 inch Thunderbolt display. We will magically go to 2011. And at this time, Apple announces the Thunderbolt display, originally priced at $1,000. It weighed in at 24 pounds, was a 27 inch monitor with 2560 by 1440 pixels, what we know as 1440p which followed a 16 by nine aspect ratio. <gasps> Featured IPS and TFT technologies along with LED lighting for very consistent uniformity at about 109 pixels per inch. Had a 60 Hertz refresh rate, 24 bit color, great brightness at 375, viewing angles just incredible and made of aluminum and glass, having that similar appearance to current day ranges of iMac and MacBook Pro unibody designs. The display featured a built-in 720p FaceTime camera replacing the iSight from previous models, microphone and stereo speaker system with subwoofer, an octopus cable combining Thunderbolt and MagSafe, permanently attached to the back of the display for data input and charging laptops. It also had a separate Thunderbolt port, Firewire 800 port, three USB 2 ports, gigabit ethernet. It literally became the central hub for your laptop. Just an incredible display. Then in June of 2016, Apple announced through a statement that it would discontinue the Thunderbolt display it would no longer produce standalone displays saying there are a number of great third-party options available for Mac. And then Apple subsequently later worked with LG to design Thunderbolt 3 enabled 4K and 5K displays. And then we finally get to 2019 when Apple releases their very own Pro Display XDR, which we now know is a 6K display. So why on earth would you go all the way back in time to 2011 to purchase one of these in 2020? These are my five reasons why you should own a Thunderbolt display in 2020. It is a very flexible hub for all your peripherals and all your devices. Right now I've got it hooked up to my 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. Um, through an Apple Thunderbolt to USB-C adapter. I've got two drives connected to it now through USB 2. And as I'm working through the day, it's fine. It's, it's fine for what I need because one of them is, is literally just a time machine that does regular backups as I'm doing my graphic design work for my clients. Um, and the other is just an archive drive. For my purposes, the USB 2 ports are totally fine. It does have FireWire 800. I don't have any more FireWire 800 devices, um, but I'm sure there are adapters we can get to convert that into a very useful port. That brings me to my second reason why you should own this monitor in 2020. That's just the overall design. This thing is beautiful. I mean, look at it. With all great Apple products, the design is timeless, and it just looks great sitting on a desk next to your other Apple products. You remember what you felt like when you opened that Apple box up and you saw that, that Mac product. You were so happy because it looked so good. You knew you spent your money in the right place. I actually also own an LG 5K, and that monitor is just gorgeous, color accuracy and all that. But man, I don't know what it is. There's just something about working on this monitor um, that brings me back to it each time. It's got the perfect balance of design, 
um, aesthetic that makes me want to actually sit and concentrate and work. Just the right amount of resolution um, from my viewing distance when I'm working. So 1440p is great. I mean, they still push out monitors right now that are 1080p monitors and sell them brand new at like Costco. Um, this monitor you can actually find used for a lot cheaper than these brand new monitors and it's going to be a much better quality product. The third reason why I like the Thunderbolt display in 2020 is its build quality. Apple is known for making their products with the most premium materials. <laughs> There's a reason why this monitor weighs about 25 pounds and you can work out with it. I mean, I literally do curls with it in the morning, like, like this. <sighs> Apple does not cut corners when they're manufacturing their products. Today, when you buy a monitor, you're gonna get a monitor that's literally made out of plastic um, with really wobbly feet. Um, I have this elevated just because when I use my MacBook Pro, um, I like to have it at an angle for circulation under here so it doesn't, it doesn't torch my nice, my nice table. Don't torch my beautiful table, MacBook Pro, when you get all hot you get all hot and steamy. This base is super sturdy. It's solid. It's a solid hunk of aluminum, for crying out loud. And look how easy I'm able to move that around without any problems. It's like Apple knows beforehand what, what product, what aspect ratio, what, what exact spec of a product will last the longest, which is very interesting because you think about most companies are creating things with um, obsolescence built in so that within a year you're like, hey, I need that new thing. With number four, I wanted to talk a little bit about color uniformity and accuracy. And as a graphic artist and photographer and videographer, um, color accuracy is super highly important for me. With Apple monitors, out of the box, they're usually, usually calibrated already for graphic design purposes. So it's gonna have a little bit of a warmer tone to it out of the box. What I recommend is getting a color monkey or an eye profiler or some kind of color calibrator that sits on the front of the monitor and run your calibration. Um, do like a D65 calibration, which is kind of your digital standard. Um, it's not too warm, not too cool, it's kind of right in the middle and quite applicable for today's standards. And anyway, when you calibrate this thing to D65, um, you know, you set the brightness to whatever you're comfortable with. If you like it really low in a dark environment or if you work in a brighter environment, like during this coronavirus quarantine, I've been moving all around my house. I started in the basement, I was in the living room and now I'm in the sunroom here. The thing you're gonna get is color uniformity and accuracy. Um, and that's what I love about these Apple monitors. They are out of the box, already accurate, and they take calibration like a champ. Um, anything where you're looking at just a swath of color, you're not gonna get a lot of banding or weird blotchiness or like hot spots. Um, a lot of monitors today, you buy them and you get these um, these bright spots in the corners um, where it feels like it's on torch mode and you have to turn it all the way down to even get some kind of uniformity. No matter what brightness you're at on the Thunderbolt display, it's always uniform and accurate. And my final reason why I love the Thunderbolt display in 2020, guess what it is? Price, ha, you guessed right. It seems to be like my fifth reason for all of these. But it's so true with this monitor, especially this one. Come on. I have seen these on Facebook Marketplace for 200 bucks. You go on there and you're scrolling through stuff and you see something for sale and you're contact, hey man, I'm gonna come over. 
Are you, do you have a Thunderbolt display? Yeah, dude. I saw it on your ad. What's your price? Is it negotiable? 200. Would you take 100? Would you take $100 for it? 150, how about that? They'll take 150. So those are my five reasons why the Thunderbolt display is the monitor for you in 2020. Hook up your old Mac to it, your new Mac. Hook up your MacBook Pro to it when, you, when you're anchored in and you need a hub. You're gonna get that other hub with all the USB ports. Just get this, save all your money. Pay $100, $200, I don't know what they're, what they're gonna cost in your local area. But look around, see what kind of deals you can get and pick one up. If I had to put a sixth reason why you should get one of these, is it's good for the environment. Yeah, that's it, man. Why? Because you're reusing people's stuff, man. You're reusing stuff that they were gonna throw out or it's been sitting around collecting dust and they, for whatever reason, upgraded to that plasticky Samsung curved thing because they thought that's what they needed. And then they're like, man, something just isn't right with this. Sitting here, it just doesn't feel right. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I've got a lot more videos coming, so please subscribe to my channel right here. Ring the bell for me and give me a thumbs up, and I will see you guys on the next video. Until then, drink coffee, and enjoy the rest of quarantine. <laughs>